In this video, I will perform a linear static analysis on a rigid frame. Full details of this exercise are on page 320 of the link PDF in the video description below. And before I go on with this example, I will create a folder on my desktop called Problem01. I will start Patran. I'll create my new database and save it to the folder on the desktop. I will click OK on the form on the right. Now, before I begin the example, I want to create my cross section for the beams. So, under Tools, go to Beam Library. Here, I will create a new section called Cross Section. I will scroll through the menu here and select a rectangular section. My width is 0.5 and my height is 0.5. If I want to view the area, moments of inertia, and so on, I can calculate a display here. I minimize the window. I can view my area, moments of inertia, and the various other section properties. After you're done, hit OK or apply. And make sure here we get the feedback that says beam section and cross section created. Now I can go ahead and define my geometry. Go to the geometry tab and create a curve using the line by XYZ method. So here what I'll do is define a vector that makes a curve in this direction. I'll make two curves that go horizontally in this direction. And then I'll make a curve that goes vertically down in this direction. So from the origin, my first curve will be defined by a vector going 0 inches in the x, 7 inches in the y, and 0 inches in the z. Here I've used spaces between the values. Another way of typing it in is 0, 7, 0. Hit apply. Here's my first curve. Now my next line will go 2 inches in the x, comma, 0 inches in the y, comma, 0 inches in the z, comma, or close bracket. The original point for this vector will be this top point. So, so click this one time, notice a curve is created. Now click this point, and my second curve is created. For my last curve, it will go 0 inches in the y, or the x, seven, or negative 10 inches in the y, and 0 inches in the z. From this top point, click it, and your last curve is created. To make my materials, go to the Properties tab, make an isotropic material, call it Matte, under Input Properties. The Young's Modulus is 1E7 PSI, and the units for this example are in pounds, inches, PSI. My Poisson ratio is 0.3. Click OK and apply. Now to apply the cross section and the material to the curves, I need to make a 1D property that uses the beam option. So once you click beam here, you will need to create two properties, one for these two vertical curves and one for the two horizontal curves. So here, call it vertical curves under input properties. Click this I or W section icon, select cross section under material, click this icon and select the material you made a moment ago. Under bar orientation, create a vector that is in the X direction, so one in the X, zero in the Y, and zero in the Z. Click OK for your application region. You select these two curves. Click add, OK, and apply. Now for horizontal curves, under input properties, you would change the bar orientation so it goes in the Y. So 0 in the X, 1 in the Y, and 0 in the Z. Click OK. Select application region. Select these two top curves. Add them. OK. And apply. Now I can define my boundary conditions here. Now the problem statement says the bottom right is fixed and there's a 100 pound load acting downward at this point. So let me go ahead and define displacement constraint here. 
I'll call it fixed. For my input data, I'll fix translations in the one, two, and three directions. And rotations about the one, comma, the y, comma, and the z direction. And recall that I can either add spaces between the values or I can add commas. Click OK, select your application region. Here I just want to select points, so I will pick the point filter here. And you'll notice that two entities have been selected here. This is point five. This is actually curve four. The first point is here, the second point is here. So by saying curve 4.2, that is the same as saying the end or the the end of curve four, which is this point. So these two are actually the same. So add them, okay, and apply. Now to add my force, I will click nodal force here, call it F under input data, the load X, zero in the X, minus 100 in the Y and zero in the Z. Click okay, add it. So for your application region, you will select this point. And again, here it's selected curve 2.2, which is this curve and the second point. And here you see curve 3.1, 3, 3.1, and 0.3, which is be its own point. So add this, okay, and apply. If I zoom out using the, holding down the control key and the middle mouse button, let's see the loading here. I can go ahead and mesh this using the curve mesher here. I can select all the curves like this or I can simply use the pick all shortcut here and apply. Click yes for all here and now let me clean this up and let me show you the node numbers. So here under the home tab click the L icon or the label control icon here and click nodes so here you see the numbers for all the nodes, one, two, three, all the way to seven. Here, it's sort of difficult to read the eight. You notice it's 10 here. Nodes eight and nine are overlapping. Here, nodes 11 and 12 are overlapping. Nodes 14 and 15 are overlapping here. In order to fix this, you will go to the meshing tab and you will click equivalence here. Click apply and it removed duplicate nodes. So now you can clearly read the nodes and you don't have any more overlapping nodes. So once you're done with that, go to the analysis tab, analyze the entire model. But before that, we'll modify the subcase. Select the default subcase. Under output requests, remove the stress and the SPC forces and add grip point force balance. The grip point force balance will allow us to create a free body diagram. Click apply and cancel. And now you can hit apply here and submit the job to Nastran for analysis. Let me fit the model using the fit view icon here. Let me turn off the node numbers let me import my results. So I would click on XDB here and apply. Your results, I will use the cursor tool here. And I wish to review my translational displacements in the X direction. Click apply, separate form appears. Here I can select individual nodes and view the values. To make this easier to read, I can go to the display attributes and under label style, I can change the color to white, the label format to fixed, significant figures to five, click OK and apply. So now when I click the nodes, I get easier to read numbers. So here at the bottom, left I get a deflection horizontal direction of 0 0.103 I'm going to compare this to what I should get 
that is what I do get for the vertical direction. I will go back here and select Y component and apply. Select this bottom node again and I get 1.67 inches. And that is what I do get. And remember this is negative. And let me clean this and apply again. Sometimes it may be difficult to read, but there is a negative there. Here we get a rotation of 0 0.042 about the Z axis. So here, switch this to rotational displacements about the Z and apply. Select this node and we get 0 0.042 just as we should get here. Cancel this, clean it up, fit it if you would like. Save the model and this concludes this example. Now as a continuation of the last example, I would like to create a free body diagram. So what I can do is under the results tab, click free body. Here I have free body load selected. If I click the display attributes, I would like to show the forces and moments. So click force slash moments. When I click apply, I get a free body diagram of the model. So here I have the 100 pounds applied. Here I had a fixed condition. So the vertical support or the vertical reaction is 100 pounds and my moment is 200 pounds inch. And that's how you display a free body diagram. And the requirement for this is that your output requests include grip point force balance as shown earlier in the video. Clean it up, save, and this ends this exercise.